What is going on, everybody, and welcome to another weekly update. And what I like to do in these videos is provide you guys some upcoming events, some upcoming earnings to get you prepared for the week ahead. If that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as I do provide daily updates as well to get you prepared for the day and the week ahead in this glorious market. So uh, let's see. The biggest thing to take away from what's going on is uh, there's not a lot of big events going on. Even the weekly recaps, it's all pretty much just about earnings. And that's ultimately what what I've always tried to focus on, aside from all the data that, again, is very uh, misleading and um refine to essentially paint any kind of potential picture out there that uh essentially the admin or you know the fed treasury they want you to see and ever since svb and credit suisse everything's been hunky dory uh and as you can see the weekly recap um there's not a lot of information the banks have gone pretty much dry but being said uh you know since uh 20 the 2022 uh, revenue is down between 19% and 26% on large banks. Uh, so that is one of the biggest uh, takeaways we are seeing from the banks and delinquencies from banks. Now, uh, also being said, this past week, we did have Netflix, we did have Tesla and, um, you know, Netflix losing, I think, I believe it was like a million subscribers and Tesla losing, um, some of their cash flow uh, by huge amounts, right? And ultimately, looking over the past week on earnings, uh, things just are not in a good state. Uh, things are pointing a lot towards uh, recessionary numbers. Um, and a lot of concern coming into the next couple of weeks. Uh, now, the biggest takeaway for me over the past week was price action. Price action is pointing to the fact that it wants to sell. That's not saying that individual stocks, Amazon and Tesla, have ha had a quite of an interesting um, push over the past week. They've gone into earnings mode as uh, Amazon does have earnings this next week. Uh, but... Uh, Apple, however, has we've got another week before we report on Apple, uh, but we'll get into what we got coming up for this week. So, again, the week just showing uh, again a lot of recessionary numbers, and I think the biggest thing understanding is uh, because of the notes uh, that we had, um, we we realize that the, the Fed are starting to push more of the mild quote unquote mild recession and understand that this mild recession that we've been um that we weren't going to have or we we're going to have a soft landing or a no landing then now has gone into a mild recession and this is uh very concerning because I don't believe we have priced in a recession I believe a lot of the moves we had over the past year and a half has essentially been for um a pivot that we were going to pivot straight out of um essentially this battle on inflation and that things would go back to all-time highs very quickly uh but the problem is is uh that's pretty much what it's been it's been a battle between inter essentially inflation and the fed's interest rates and then the essentially the fed increasing rates at, at, at a historical pace essentially broke two, three banks this far. Uh, maybe it's, I believe it might even be four banks. Um, I forget, there's there's just been a lot of action just in general going on, uh, but ultimately understand that um, we've lost banks, right? There's been big bank failures and two of the biggest banks in history have, have essentially we've lost already in that even though JPM, um, even JPM, are the number one bank that we have, has still lost a lot of money over the past year, even with all the deposits that they've had. So uh, being said, uh, things are not looking good. And not only that, but uh, people are pulling money out of banks just in general. Now, whether that's to purchase assets uh, could be a strong possibility as the dollar um, is at risk of, uh, of potentially not being a world reserve currency. So, and... This is why China and Russia and, and BRICS is aware if it was going to ever, if we're going to ever have that transition, it would be now or over the next couple of years. 
Again, this isn't going to be an overnight uh, thing, but it's definitely something, a strong possibility that could potentially happen. Uh, and understand this is essentially how empires fall, right? They don't fall overnight, but um, ultimately understand we're very much at risk uh, if we don't do something about it. And so all that being said, we do have the debt limit coming in as well. Now, uh, we did get a lot of the, the treasury revenue and, you know, they they missed their expectations by a lot. They thought they would have had money coming in till about August. Now they're realizing that um, they only could potentially have money till about mid-June, uh, also around the debt limit. Uh, and so the, the biggest concern there being, again, if we default on our loan, obviously that's going to crash everything. <laughs> Um, they always come through. Typically, it's not saying that there's always a chance that it, it could not. Uh, even much so that Yellen, I guess, has this one trillion dollar coin uh, that the Treasury can essentially um, create or mint that would um, <laughs> could potentially uh, fund this whole thing. Uh, but again, could cause other side effects in which the government or the government can essentially sue itself so it just leads in this huge cascading hot mess that it already is so <laughs> that being said um none of that really is relevant to i mean it's relevant but ultimately understand that at that point things are going to be so bad that it's not going to matter right it, then things will just crash right the market will crash something like that happens uh we are very close to getting into june uh, but before we get there um what we need to know coming into this week is uh, we got some big earnings. We've seen a lot of weakness coming in. Uh, again, our next monetary policy is next week. So we are really kind of aiming for that. We're trying to get as much information and data as possible before that. So we still got some heavy hitters. Uh, when it, uh, We're just starting to get into a lot of the heavy hitters after uh, Netflix and Tesla in the big banks. And so now we want to kind of see what these industry leaders are doing. And then from that point, um, going into monetary policy, which we still have over 80% chance that is going to be another 25 point basis move. And then after that, they were potentially looking at a pause. Again, I think that it's highly uh, dependent upon what happens between not now in May 3rd, but now in June 14th before uh, we will determine if that's going to be a pause or not. Again, there's a very, very delayed reaction to what is going on. But one thing to keep in mind, not only do we have monetary policy next week, we have non-farms. And one of the, the lagging indicators on a recession is the numbers. And so if we start seeing uh, those re numbers reflecting on non-farms of a recession, you have to understand this is what's been going on is that the Fed have been talking about a recession in the last meeting. Uh, but when that when we had our last monetary policy, Powell kind of just uh, sidestepped the question on a recession. There was no actual uh, uh, talk about a recession. And, and you noticed around that time, too, everybody essentially yelling, uh, the administration, well, the administration is going to say it's a soft landing or no landing or whatever, however they want to define it. But it's always been kind of just sidestepped. Uh, now, I think coming into next week, you have to keep in mind that they might have a united front and say that, OK, well, it's, yeah, we're going to have a recession, but it's going to be mild. There's no such thing as a mild recession. There are massive layoffs. Amazon's announcing more layoffs. Uh, we're finally getting McDonald's this week which is going to be important. So this is why this week is going to be more important when it comes to earnings, because we're going to start getting outside the banks. We're going to get in a lot of these industry leaders to really see, kind of gauge the level at which things are at. And so if they all announce around next week that, hey, we are in a mild or going into mild recession or are in a mild recession, um, the market's going to price that in. And then that will potentially start selling off at that point. Like I said, price action is already pointing that it wants to sell off. Uh, because of what it's seen thus far after this week and after next week, uh, you're pretty much going to have all the earnings for the market to make its decision. I think at that point, uh, if we're going to start selling, I think we would start selling then at that point. Again, nothing is good. There, there is no sense of good as far as the market's concerned and the market health. Um, 
for us to continue up. Like we've had a parabolic move up to this point, and now I think what you're doing, you, what you normally do in a normal cycle is you have the run up before earnings. You have earnings. You may have after uh, you know the first couple big uh, tech and big industry leader uh, earnings. Uh, things kind of go stagnant for about three weeks after that. So it starts to like pull, not naturally pull back after that. It's not saying that earnings are done. There's earnings that go on the whole, um, the whole Q2, but ultimately I understand that uh, the market itself kind of dials back and kind of goes into reserve for three or four weeks. Uh, and then it, it does whatever until the next earnings cycle. That's a normal cycle. And then you mix that in with everything else that is currently going on. Uh, we, we'll see what happens. But as of right now, it's been a very kind of weak earnings coming into this as we have essentially kind of chopped for about two weeks. And we've chopped a lot. Uh, the biggest thing being is that uh, even on the, um, the general index, right, we've been playing this very, very tight, tight range over almost a year. Uh, we've been bouncing back and forth like 300 points almost and, and understand that um, – there's going to be a huge, huge move out of this, uh, but we have to see which way that's going to be. I still think that uh, the market has to price in a recession uh, from that point. If that's a new low, that's a new low. Uh, I've, I've showed where that new low is for me. I think it's around that 3200 because that would essentially kind of normalize everything where that needs to be. You have to understand prices need to come way, way down for people to afford things uh, or to even keep this... Uh, this behemoth, what we call our financial system, this debt-based system that we got to keep going. Uh, prices need to come down. Inflation needs to come down. That's why the Fed hasn't laid off rates yet. And so anyway, uh, this week is going to be very, very important. Uh, but like I said, uh, uh, right now we have monetary policies. The next big thing is what we're trying to really watch. So we're trying to really wa prepare for next week. But uh, again, a lot of the earnings that we get is going to kind of give us insight into that. And so, like I was saying, upcoming earnings are going to be very big this week. We have First Republic come Monday after the close. That is going to be interesting to see what kind of numbers come out of that. Uh, Tuesday, we have McDonald's. Uh, we're going to see about uh, layoffs and what they're looking at there. We have Microsoft and Google. It's going to be another uh, big ones to really keep an eye on uh, coming into Tuesday. BA Meta. Uh, so we're getting a lot of different industries and industry leaders. This is why this week is going to be very important uh, because we do have BA, we have Meta on Wednesday, and on Thursday we have Amazon and Cat. Uh, so you're going to get a very big uh, variety of industries that um, are going to give us insight. And if, again, any of those reflect recessionary numbers and you can afford guidance that's worrisome. Um, I think it start really selling the market off, and if especially if you start getting your Microsoft and uh, Amazon uh, start looking bad, uh, BA I'm sure will look bad. It always looks bad, but somehow it still holds up. But uh, if Amazon, my biggest ones this week would be probably um, Amazon, Microsoft, and McDonald's. Like I said, McDonald's. Uh, there's been a lot of worries, massive, massive layoffs with McDonald's. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. So it's something that hasn't been announced. It might be waiting until here Tuesday uh, if that announcement occurs. So, again, there's a lot of potential big outcomes of this week on what comes of these earnings. And so typically you don't get a lot of other big news. That's what you saw in like, the events section. Um, like there really isn't a lot going on aside from earnings because uh, the Fed and everybody's trying to understand what's going on. Uh, so you have these reports come out, then everybody's reading through the reports, trying to really determine if there's a recession coming or what. And now you're hearing more whispers of a recession, recession, recession. Again, this is the final stage, and the final stage is a recession and for that to play out and be priced in. And then uh, the market can recover and potentially pivot from that point, which is where the Fed would actually start cutting rates and um, potentially get into another quantitative easing cycle. Uh, again, there's... Uh, there have been signs of this 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 new uh it's not a new but it's uh i guess it's only been a triggered like um every once in a blue moon so uh, a potential setup for a huge boom cycle that we you get very rarely so awesome awesome 
often and it was triggered this week and then know that um i think it's very much a strong possibility that we can get a huge boom out of this but the thing is is that you need the recession to be priced in first like those numbers haven't hit the wire those real numbers haven't hit the wire and we're start we're just now starting to see that and if you look back at everything um yes the market is efficient in pricing some things in i don't really like to say things are priced in because i don't think they are right i think when that when that news hits the wire uh that's when it prices it in and that a piece of information has not been priced in because all you've been hearing is soft landings in no landings over the past year and a half. So I don't believe that's priced in at all. More so it was trying to gauge a pivot uh, and um, a battle of inflation, right? That, that's what it was. It had nothing to do with the recession because that wasn't the, the topic of uh, discussion, right? The topic of discussion was inflation and rates and, um, and how bad things are and that we would have a soft landing we would bounce right back out but now we're talking about a real recession and the fact the fed is still laying on rates and people are still um getting essentially laid off left and right and so you have to understand once it starts affecting other industries aside from tech it's going to be a huge issue and it's coming yeah there's no denying that and so as, as long as the fed continue to raise rates even if they stop raising rates they're going to hold them for a prolonged period of time if nothing breaks and it's just going to you're just waiting it out until something does break because the Fed needs something to break to cause this inflation. And um, and Powell has stated that in front of in the testimony he's had. Right. And so that's been made very clear on the intentions of the Fed. And that's the way the Fed tool works. Right. Either they uh, their tools either to stop inflation by essentially uh, removing a ton of jobs or uh, to. Um, support the health of employment and and they can't do that right now it's all gauged off of uh, interest rates right and uh and where they currently sit at and the fact they've sitting they're sitting at five and there's even talks about it going up to five point uh, seven five percent so adding a lot more rate increases than anticipated from the five point potential two five um that we might be getting so with that all being said I get very interesting scenario, but like I said, we'll see. There's a lot of good earnings coming up uh, this week to kind of give us insight into that. Uh, we have SPX at sitting 62, so, so it's, it's dropping to almost normal levels. Tesla's dropped a lot considering it just had earnings. Uh, BA is going to be higher this week because of uh, earnings, and then JPM is much, much lower than average. So they're not really anticipating too much this week. Uh, let's look, take a look at some technicals. Um, I don't like the fact that we continue to chop here. Uh, I think the market itself is is randomly just been dropping, and the market's been extremely aggressive when we move into this uh, 4160 mark. Every time we've hit that, it's wicked out of there. And I'm not, I'm talking like fast wicks. It's not an all day thing. Uh, typically, even this one here uh, that everybody thought was going to potentially break out, and even watching this. I can tell you that um, the strength going into this candle was was very strong in the morning, and it it took a matter of minutes after that we came out and we broke out and we started ripping hard, and then all of a sudden, just within minutes, it just dropped straight back down. It wicked right back down, uh, and then it just started selling off again. Uh, so this area is protected uh, extremely well and i think uh again we're gonna get rejected and eventually be down at least at 3800 uh we'll see uh if there's any other news for potential recession price being priced in if that's the case uh could start selling off more it really just depends again it's all about timing so we don't really know for sure what's going to happen uh, but we do know uh, i do have a strong feeling that we are coming back down uh, to try to price that in how again how much we don't know um but my technical wise i think normalization is down here at the 3200 but we'll see i think that will be the new low that will be the bottom bottom and then we could go uh up from there but again it all depends on timing there, there's no way of truly knowing time will only tell on um recession right but the fact is that they are starting to talk about recession if they start uh if, it, if recession comes out of powell's or yellen's or administration's mouth that's going to be it right you have to understand that that's going to be the nail in the coffin 
um because the next thing is is if, if the next thing is is that if um interest rates stop and pause credit crunch is the next thing and they are starting to see some early signs of credit crunch uh, currently going on in that uh, if that's a possibility right that that people can't lend at all or, or borrow at all um, that's going to be a huge problem considering that uh, that's where a lot of people are essentially living off of as of right now and hoping for things to unwind quicker than what they are and uh and again the demand is still there because people have pulled out a lot of their their essentially money their savings whatever the case is to start purchasing assets in and worry that the dollar again um might lose its spot as the world reserve currency so if that's the, the if for that concern you know people may be actually buying gold or or maybe purchasing uh, property or having some uh, physical asset outside of just banking and the digital dollar that may not mean anything that can lose a ton of its value. Uh, so that is what's important and what people are concerned about. So we'll see what happens there. But um, like I said, technical wise, uh, bulls, if you want this, this thing really needs to break out of the 4,200. You want this thing to continue up. Uh, bears, this thing needs to kind of break this uh, 4,100 mark. Uh, again, this week, I think if we get some, depending on what happens with some of these earnings, could be a strong possibility. You have to understand if we're in that fragile state. So if one of these uh, earnings report something uh, that's unusual, uh, that ref referencing um, a major recession, that can be hugely worrisome and could cause us to start selling back off. And you do have some speed bumps in between, but ultimately, like you have a speed bump roughly around here, around the 4K mark. Um, I have another uh, speed bump here roughly around the 3940 mark but ultimately um you know the stop is down here at 38. you can see that here you, when you look at these higher time frames that's kind of where the market's been playing we kind of been playing this range um because of that and like i said i think we could potentially be whatever move is going to happen out of this is going to be big whether it's up or down uh, ultimately i think um, favoring the down we play off of potential probabilities I think we've got a stronger probability to go down than we do up with the amount of news that's coming in a potential recession that's coming. Uh, again, if that's the case, I think we could uh, our normalize, we'll hit our normalization point around the, roughly around the 3200. I'm not saying we will hit that, but um, I think there's just a strong possibility of that potentially happening. So we will see there uh, and see what happens of the week. But we got a big week ahead of us. So uh, Bitcoin uh, selling off heavy. Uh, going into friday again um i've referenced this every time I, i've been seeing this this month the candle uh dead cat bounce uh we'll see if this thing drops if this thing can't roughly hold this 2500 and start pushing back up uh, that is very much a dead cat bounce this is essentially what a dead cat bounce looks like this massive selling yeah you're going to get a big bounce and then it's just going to be the next tail down uh, i think we are going to see it roughly hit around this uh, this 10k mark if not a little bit lower uh, i think is a strong possibility uh, i think it will start uh, kind of slowly grinding around here before the next halving and push up again we got to get through um earnings and then uh, get through a lot of these the debt ceiling and everything that's currently going on monetary policy Again, if recession numbers start really showing maybe that's the non-farms that do that as well uh, if there's a huge drop from what estimate is uh that could be the thing that prices in a recession and then once that happens i think it could cause everything to start grinding dropping uh, dramatically and then grind down here uh, i think though very briefly maybe it's a month or two uh and then start pushing back up i think it's a very strong possibility so um in gold this is why i've been watching gold uh because gold looks like recession gold doesn't move like this unless there's essentially recession concerns uh, but it does need to break out roughly around the uh, 195, 200 for this thing to keep going. Uh, right now, it's just chopping because it's it's aware that there's recession talks, right? So I think that's why it's holding this level. And again, it's just waiting uh, for new news to drop. Uh, but we'll see there. Uh, Tesla, massive down, um, starting to sell. I think, again... I think we're again going to see the 120, the 140, 120 
first stop is 120 or 140 here, and then the next stop is 120. Um, again, we'll see what happens. Again, if we start pricing in a recession, tech is going to get hit big first. If we do drop below the 100, you got a pretty big drop. I don't know if we're going to see 56. Uh, that is a big drop. Um, but I think if it does break anywhere below 100, it's not going to last very long below 100. Even if it is pricing in a recession, I think it would be very quick. So um, my eye is on that, that if it does um, by chance break below 100, yeah, start looking uh, again to see what uh, what happens in the momentum around there. Um, accumulation, in my opinion, is what I'm going to be doing around those levels. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Bear, bulls you want this thing to stay up it needs to hold the 158 if it can't do that this week um right you're going to make a new low in my opinion so that, that's kind of that do or die level right here roughly on 158 if we break below that this week i think um this thing is going to go way lower right it could it could still hold anywhere above roughly um the 125 and still be a higher low but um we're definitely at a concerning level that could really start breaking and flushing pretty quickly. So that's kind of what I'm more concerned about and watching. Uh, BA, again, just a lot of sideways action here. We're really just kind of, I mean, they got earnings. There's no reason for it to even be at 205, like I've always stated. Uh, this company, company is essentially backed by the government. So that's the only reason why it's staying where it is, in my opinion. Uh, but, um, Again, needs to break 220, hold 195. It's kind of what we're looking at, BA. JPM. Again, they had a, uh, obviously a, a big earnings because of all the deposits. But even being said, um, it's is it going to break essentially the one, 144 or is this thing going to start selling back down to the 123? And again, I think it's going to backfill this gap. Just like on Tesla, just like on the um, general index, I think uh, you will feel this gap and be down at 108 eventually. Uh, if we start pricing a recession, there's a strong possibility that can happen. Uh, and I think quite swiftly, too, as well, if, the, if that's the case. Uh, Golden Sachs uh, is pushing back up. Looks like a retest. If you can see this uh, support here, uh, hit that retest and potentially start selling off. So watch that key level here uh, coming into this week, the three. 45 if we get rejected hard off that uh, could potentially start seeing us coming down lower see if we can make a lower lower than this low here so looking below uh, essentially that 305 uh what i'm watching for the banks uh, bank of america same thing you got a very hard solid floor here roughly around the 31 got rejected pretty hard there if the thing continues to start selling off again and breaks back below uh that 28 level could start being concerning. So definitely have to be watching the banks. Uh, as far as like the rest, I haven't really gone over other individual stocks because a, a lot of the stocks are very, very overextended already. Uh, as you can see in the general index, um, we are we're in the overextended. Uh, we're in earnings mode, right? And like I've talked about, if there's an open window where there's no big events or anything going on, which we've had, uh, the market's going to take advantage of it and get its earning models in. And then we just kind of stay and hover uh, for the next piece of news, get through earnings. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the market just continues to grind until uh, we get through at least till after monetary policy. And then at that point, if we raise it another 25, we find out we're in a recession. Uh, we get non-farms that show essentially that we are in a recession uh, then we can we could potentially get some major major selling next Friday. Uh, I think is a strong possibility if we get more earnings this week that are pointing more recession type numbers. Uh, you might actually get some sort of breakdown uh, out of that top range from the SPX, and then potentially start selling. Start the selling going into next week, and then uh, again if we get that another twenty five, get in any. Just be aware that at any point news can drop. That could be the one piece of information that we we need for something. To, to start the selling off uh just be very mindful of that again for us to be positive on this whole thing you're gonna need some major uh uh shifts in essentially the thought process that uh, powell would have to uh start cutting rates that would help the banks tremendously 
because uh, then these banks wouldn't be underwater. Uh, but also understand that it's it's uh, it's still very much a negative thing because prices are still high for housing. Pri inflation is still very high. So you can see why the Fed haven't laid off yet. And this is why I, I stick to the current stance that I am because um, from the Fed's perspective, th they aren't in a situation where they can start laying off or start cutting rates. And understand that even if they pause and hold rates, it's just a ticking time bomb waiting for something to break before they'll even, you know, think about cutting rates. Things need to get a lot worse before they start cutting rates. So with all that being said, uh, that's pretty much where we stand. We'll see. It'll be a very interesting week. Uh, a lot of different um, industries reporting this week. So I think it'll be a very informational week. Uh, so I'm excited about that. It's good to get new information, kind of get provide new insight into what's going on. Uh, so I think over the next two weeks are going to be really, really big. Um, if the we, if the move move doesn't happen this week, I think more so it will happen next week. We have again monetary policy. We have non farms, and again, my biggest thing is is uh, what's going to come of that non farms. Are we going to get recessionary numbers? So I'm more so looking at the recession. We're on the final stage. Let's price in a recession and get this thing done with pretty much is where I'm at. It's taken a very long time. It's taken a very long time to process. Uh, but again, if this information just came out straight to the headline news, this utopic uh, perspective I always talk about, uh, then the market would just crash and be crashing all the time. So uh, obviously it's not going to happen. Uh, so you have to have some sort of uh, hope. You got to provide hope. That's what the utopian picture is. If there's no hope, right, then you just uh, crush all hopes and dreams uh and, and normally you don't want to take that you don't want to take that away from people in general right because if you're going through anything difficult times sometimes it's all people have is hope and so you have to at least provide that uh but yeah, realize that um uh, if something doesn't get patched quickly that uh that that will the the reality of the situation will hit and you take away hope and that's when you get crashes so uh, we will see uh, moving forward and then go from there. So if you made it this far, I do appreciate you. Go ahead and drop a like. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.